Hi guys, Josh Lloyd here, ready for another week of first look for DraftKings for the NBA. While you're here, hit the notification bell, hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe if for some reason you haven't already. Just do that right now, drop a comment down below, and let's talk about this eight-game slate. We do have on for Monday in the NBA, and the first game we look at, real blowout risk here, is the Bucks and the Wizards. Bradley Beal missed last game for um, the Wizards, but he isn't on the injury report, so he should be returning. But Davis Bertans and Hull Neto both are, so the absence of those guys could open things up for Rui Hachimura, like we saw last game, or even Troy Brown Jr. in Hull Neto's case to be the backup point guard, because of course, Ish Smith is already sidelined. Milwaukee, they're clear of injuries. They don't have to worry about that at all. Um... Robin Lopez at 3,200. It's very cheap for a guy that consistently gets minutes. Now, he consistently doesn't produce good numbers. He's going up against his brother, if you want to uh, put that sort of narrative focus on things. Yeah, look, these aren't great games, but 24, 17 points, 15 points at 3,000. If you're looking for a cheapie to sneak in there, it's not the worst one out there. Uh, 6,500 for Drew Holiday. I do like how low that salary is. He's starting to look pretty good at the moment. So that looks pretty strong to me, while Beal's at 9,400. And Beal, I don't know. I think yeah, it looks appealing. Under 10,000 for Bradley Beal does look appealing. But, you know, 22, 41, 52, 38. Look, the 52 is good, but the others aren't worth 9,400. He's a bit up and down for me because the shooting has been rough at times. Yanni is up at 11,100. Um, yeah, really tough to ignore what Antetokounmpo is doing. It's also tough to ignore what Russell Westbrook's doing because he is putting up some great DFS lines. He had, what, 80 last game? That's obviously awesome. That was without Beal. But 45, 47, 65, he's not bad. I, I'm not sure I love the matchup here particularly for uh, Westbrook, so that would probably sour me somewhat. I wouldn't be all that keen on DiVincenzo or Portis or even Chris Middleton, to be honest, at over 8,000. I think we can find better options out there. No spread or total out for this game yet at this stage either. Next up, we're going to look at Sacramento. They are taking on the Charlotte Hornets in Charlotte. The Hornets are two and a half point favorites. The total is 240. Terry Rogier hurt his um, uh, leg at the end of the last game. He's questionable in this one. So let's see whether he goes. Now, of course, if he doesn't go, we're probably going to see Devontae Graham slide back into that starting job. Um, Cody Zeller is at 4,900. And much like Robin Lopez, he's a little bit more expensive, but he's just sort of solid. Like there's no upside there. It's more cash game sort of scenario, but 24, 25, 23 in the last three games, it's not terrible. It's not great, but it's not terrible. I do love what Rashawn Holmes is doing, though. 6,400 for Holmesy. There's no Hassan Whiteside to take those couple of minutes off the upside there for Holmes. You know, we're talking 40 points almost every game here over the last three, and this matchup is pretty strong. So I do like Holmes quite a bit. Gordy Haywood has been somewhat down, but at 7,300, I'm okay using him. Um, and then we look at guys like Darren Fox at 9,100, who is rolling. Darren Fox is averaging over 50 in his last five games. Like, big, big numbers. 51 over the in the last game, uh, 56, 64. Big numbers for Foxy. I think he's worth looking at. Lamelo's at 87. He's coming down a bit. I'd like to see him come down a little bit more before I get too invested. And I think the 6,700 for PJ Washington Jr. also on the high side. And there's no way in, in hell that I'm spending $6,000 on Marvin Bagley. With Tyrese Halliburton back, there is no chance that you would get me to suck into that one. Next one, the Knicks. They are traveling or oh so far, to take on the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets are seven and a half point favorites here. No Griffin, no Durant. Um, 225 is the total. The Knicks are without Rose. Alfred Payton is doubtful, while Emmanuel quickly is probable. Austin Rivers was ruled out, and then uh, the latest injury report had that he was playing. So maybe he gets him in. It's not that he's a DFS option, but that can, any time that Tom Thibodeau can play anybody who isn't a rookie, you know that he's going to take that opportunity. So Rivers could cut into Quickly's upside in that scenario. Uh, quickly is at 5,600, so that is relatively appealing. But again, there is that risk that Thibodeau is being Thibodeau, and uh, we never want Thibodeau to be Thibodeau. Actually, that's not true, because in DFS, sometimes we do, because he plays guys an insane amount of minutes. Got to love Jim Harden, 11,000. He should absolutely roast this Knicks team. Well, Rowan Barrett, 6,200 for Barrett. He's putting up some good numbers. He's shooting, I think, like 55% over the last month from three. 30 points consistently over the last three games. 6,200 is high, and I'm not ready to fully invest, but it is the Nets, and their defense isn't particularly good. So uh, I think that there is some value in in having a crack at, at him. 
Kyrie's at 9,300. Not bad, but not spectacular. Well, Julius Randle, almost at 10,000. I know that I'd want to spend 10,000 in a different way than on Julius Randle, but two 60s in his last three. Unfortunately, there was a 25-pointer in there. And you can see just the up-and-down nature of his scoring. It's really risky for me to spend 10000 or almost 10000 on him. Um, Jeff Green's, Joe Harris's, Nolan's, Noel's, no interest in any of those guys. The Spurs, the Pistons, this is a back-to-back for San Antonio. And at this stage, we don't know whether Derek White is going to play. Now, White put up a huge performance on Sunday, but they got blown out by almost 40 points against the Sixers. So if he is out, that's going to boost the value of DeJounte Murray and Lonnie Walker. White is at 5,200, and he annihilated that number. And I don't know if DraftKings has updated it to show us what he did in that. No, they haven't updated his uh, his performance yet. But he should... Uh, look, if he plays, he annihilates that. We just don't know at this stage. No Hamadou Diallo for Detroit. So DeLon Wright at 56. I think that is absolutely rock solid as a cash option as the starting point guard. No Dennis Smith Jr. there either. While Isaiah Stewart at 4,100, just consistently eating into Mason Plumley's time. You look at his recent games, 28, 22, 20, and that's okay at 4,100. Again, not a super high upside guy, but pretty good. I like Jeremy Grant at 7,500. The matchup, I think, works pretty well there. While DeJounte Murray, I would only only consider DeJounte at 77 if Derek White is out. We also don't know about DeMar DeRozan, who's missed the last couple for personal reasons. He's at 8,500. If he plays, I do think that that looks pretty strong to me. Rudy Gay had a stinker against the Philadelphia 76ers. He's been playing well before that. I'm not sure that I'm fully invested in Rudy Gay as a strong DFS option here, though. Looking at Indiana... They are taking on the Denver Nuggets. Of course, Karis LeVert is back in action. The Nuggets are five-point favorites. The total is 226.5. The Nuggets are without uh, Gary Harris again and without Monty Morris and without RJ Hampton. So guard depth is down. Big Chungus, Nikola Jokic, 10,700. It's really just hard to go past him, especially when you're under 11,000. He looks awesome there. While Faku, Faku Kompatso at 3,500. Faku's going to get 20-plus minutes. He had 11, 17, 18, 16 the last three games. Yeah, I'd like him to be in that 18, 17 zone, which at 3,500 is all right. Not a bad GPP upside guy. I don't like that they've bumped Levert up to 7,000 for his second game back. First game, he put up 23. It's not enough, obviously. So I probably would avoid him there. I do think Magaporta Jr. at 6,800 works okay there, while Brogdon's at 7,400. No, I'm probably a little bit off that. 9,600 for DeMontis Sabonis is all right. It's probably better to me than spending that on, say, a Julius Randle. Um, but there is always a risk that he can turn in a stinker. He's done a couple of those. I'm avoiding Holiday. I'm avoiding McConnell with um, with Levert back. That makes it tough. While the headmaster, Jamal Murray, in a real cold streak. Now, I, I would have liked his salary to drop somewhat, but it hasn't dropped enough. So that would only be... If I'm putting in multiple lineups, maybe I throw him into a GPP. But even then, I'm not particularly enthused by it. Next up, we're looking at the Clippers. They're taking on the Mavericks. This this is a back-to-back for the Clippers. No indication that Kawhi will sit, but who knows? The Clippers are one-and-a-half-point favorites. Maybe he drinks too much coffee and gets dizzy before the game. I don't know. That's something that happens to Clippers players, apparently. 227.5 is the total here. Uh, Luca is at 10,600. Yeah, uh, I like that a lot. I like Paul George at 8,200, assuming he uh, steers clear of the Nespresso. And Porzingis at 8,300 also looks pretty good. These guys have got a little bit of bad blood between them. Of course, anyone who plays against Marcus Morris will have bad blood because he's Marcus Morris, but a little bit extra for these guys. Well, only 8,900 for Kawhi. Mate, sign me up. I am all about that sort of price tag. Uh, Jalen Brunson's at 5,000. It's a cash play rather than an upside option. While Muxy Kleber at 43, he's not really a good DFS guy. Reggie Jackson, we can take a look at. 5,200 for Reg. He's going to be starting in place of Patrick Beverly. Now, he's not the hugest option, but say Paul George or Kawhi Leonard get ruled out because uh, who knows? They eat chili, then go to the toilet without washing their hands. So there's, you know, groinal inflammation. They have to sit this one out, then Jackson's usage goes up. Let's take a look. At the next game, we are looking at the Memphis Grizzlies and the Phoenix Suns. Of course, we have to deal with Taylor Jenkins' nonsense rotations here. The Suns are seven-point favorites. The total is 228. No Cam Johnson for Phoenix. No Jaron Jackson, of course, for Memphis, uh, the Spectre. Uh, Dario Saric, 4,200 for Saric. He's closing games over DeAndre Ayton. He is putting up big numbers, good usage. He is, what, you know, 
25 points in his last game, not 20, 21, 34. They're okay. 4,200 is not a bad price tag. He's probably more of a GPP option. I do like Devin Booker as well at 8,000. He looks pretty strong to me there, while Valanciunas at 76. Valanciunas is just roasting blokes at the moment. Look at his numbers. Last game, he had a 45-pointer. He had a 32, a 67. Like at 7,600, there is nice GPP value for him, especially against this Suns team. DeAndre Ayton, uh, no interest there. Jam around at 8,000 is too high, while Chris Paul at 78 looks okay without being particularly sexy. Let's go on to the Lakers and the Warriors. This is the last game of the day. We know that no Anthony Davis in this one, um, but no Marcus Sol either. So that's important to know. Cole Kuzma and LeBron are both probable. 6,200 for Montrez Harrell. He should get 30-plus minutes without Gasol, and I do think that makes a lot of sense there. Kuzma's at 6,000. He's actually averaging 40 points in his last three games. I don't mind him there. Draymond's at 65. He's coming off a triple-double against the Jazz, where he had 57 DraftKings points. That's pretty bloody sexy. I think he's all right without being spectacular, and I think LeBron at 10-3 is, uh, looks pretty good in this one too. Uh, Wiggins was great against the Jazz. I would only use him for GPPs at 5,900, while I do like Schroeder at 6,200. I think there's a real opportunity for him to put up a big one. Jimmy Wiseman's at 5,100. That's a nice GPP option. He had some pretty good numbers against the Jazz, and going up against Gobert is always tough. But he did it in 23 minutes. He's at least worth throwing into your um, into your lineups and seeing how that goes, or into your into your player pool to be more accurate. So if we have a look at some top plays right across the slate. I'm looking at Sharich, Zeller, and Harrell, three center type guys. Delon Wright, Drew Holiday, Emmanuel quickly. Derek White if he plays. Kyle Kuzma, Rashawn Holmes, Jokic, uh, Booker, Doncic, Harden. Paul George, Yanni, and Kawhi. They're probably the better plays, I think, on the day. So don't forget, guys, subscribe uh, down below. Hit the notification. Give it a thumbs up. You can find my channel as well. It's linked in the title and in the description, Josh Lloyd Fantasy Basketball. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.